Hola nuevos amigos, bienvenidos una vez más a su programa. It's good to see you. Last time we met, we learned about the wonderful and amazing culture of the Aztecs and some of their history and customs. In this lesson, we will continue to learn about the ancient cultures of Mexico and Central America. We will discover the ancient Mayan civilization and how they were leaders in creating a calendar by using astronomy, the scientific study of planets, stars, and the universe. Astronomy in Spanish is astronomía. La astronomía. Repitan conmigo. La astronomía. Muy bien. Calendar in Spanish is calendario. El calendario. Say it with me, nuevos amigos. El calendario. They devised the calendar using mathematical calculations and were the first ancient society in the new world to use the concept of zero. The word for math in Spanish is matemáticas. Las matemáticas. Una vez más. Las matemáticas. Zero in Spanish is cero. El cero. Let's say it together one more time. El cero. We'll learn about some of the Mayan arts including their weaving of cloth and discover the kinds of foods they ate. We'll also find out who was allowed to eat chocolate. I think you'll be surprised. The word chocolate is spelled exactly the same in Spanish as it is in English. Que interesante! It is pronounced chocolate. El chocolate. Say it with me. El chocolate. Muy bien. Ahora, saquen sus diarios de español y prepárense para escribir. Let's take a look at the verb of the day. Veamos el verbo del día. El verbo del día es ver. To see ver. Let's conjugate the verb ver, to see. Yo veo. I see. Tú ves. You see. Él, ella ve. He, she sees. Usted ve. You see formal. Nosotros vemos. We see. Ustedes ven. You all see. Wow, nuevos amigos! Isn't the universe beautiful? The Milky Way galaxy, where our solar system is located, was much honored by the Maya. When they observed the night sky, they saw the millions of stars that make up the Milky Way. They called it the World Tree which was represented by a tall and majestic flowering tree, the Seba. The star clouds that formed the Milky Way were seen as the tree of life, where all life came from. Let's learn some new words that deal with observing the skies and learning about the planets and stars. La astronomía. El observatorio. Observatory. El Observatorio. El Sistema Solar. The Solar System. El Sistema Solar. La Constelación. Constellation. La Constelación. El Planeta. Planet. El Planeta. El Eclipse. Eclipse. El eclipse. La estrella. Star. La estrella. La luna. Moon. La luna. Venus. 
Venus. Venus. ¿Qué ves? Yo veo la luna. ¿Y tú qué ves? Yo veo la estrella. ¿Y ahora qué ves? Ahora yo veo la constelación de Orión. Now I feel the constellation of Orion. The Mayan people were fascinated with the sky, and most of their activities were based upon different cycles of the sun, planets, moon, and stars. We spoke with Olivia Navarro Farr of SMU about Mayan astronomy. She shared some interesting information with us. The Mayans viewed their world in a very uh, naturalistic way. Their cosmology or religious belief system and ideology was based on very much their surroundings and their ability to observe their surroundings and use these observations to improve their lives, to maintain their um, the status quo of being able to plant every year, to be able to reap the harvest every year, knowing the time and knowing being very familiar with their environment when it would rain, when it was dry, um, which resources came from where. Primary observations in order to maintain this kind of high civilization were probably devoted in large part to the stars and astronomy. Um, we have in sites such as Chichen Itza in Mexico and um, Maya Pan as well as in, in Mexico as well. Um, buildings that we archaeologists have determined to be very likely observatories um, and from, from which stars were viewed specifically by, we would hypothesize, priests whose main job was to observe the stars. Um, and we believe that a lot of this information not only informed on religious beliefs, but that it was also tied into very practical purposes like, again, understanding cycles of harvest, when it would rain, when there were going to be eclipses. Their calendar, the Maya calendar, as we know it today and understand it, and we are still unlocking mysteries and secrets of the calendar, um, it has 365 days and was divided into 52 year cycles that were repeated. Um, at the end of these cycles, typically it was believed among the ancient Maya that it was sort of a doomsday period. And so it, life was very tentative and stressful at the end of these cycles because the idea was, is it going to continue? Is our cycle going to continue? So this belief in the stars and the consistent uh, prediction of events, major events, um, was huge in terms of being able to continue life itself. The Mayans had a religious calendar. It was a 260-day calendar, which we call the Long Count calendar. And special days and special feast days and days of reverence were observed on this calendar. This calendar was not invented, per se, by the Maya, however. It was developed and added onto by the Maya, certainly used a great deal. But it was a concept that, was, that originated before the time of the Maya. It originated with the Olmec people. The counting for the ancient Maya was really important because the Maya conceived with their calendar of a very precise numerical system. A numerical system that included the concept of zero, which had not been conceived of anywhere else except by the Arab, Arab, Arabic people. And the Maya had a specific symbol for zero, just as they had symbols for other numbers. Num numeric representations, however, were not as we know them today. We had sim the Maya had symbols of five and one. Five was represented by a bar, and a one was represented by a dot. So, if you wanted to show, for example, the number 13, you would show two bars, five and five being 10, with three dots on the side for one, two, three, for 13. So you have five, 10, 13. 19 would be three bars, five, 10, 15, and four dots for the 19. These numbers were used in 
representations on stela, monuments where rulers could be shown next to specific dates represented by bars and dots. Amigos, ¿cómo están? Espero que bien. I've been looking forward to talking to you today. Since your lesson today includes astronomy, la astronomía, the moon and the stars, listen closely to our dicho. Si ves las estrellas brillar, sal, marinero a la mar. Now say it with me. Si ves las estrellas brillar, sal, marinero a la mar. If you see the stars shine, the sailor will head off to sea. One last time, amigos. Si ves las estrellas brillar, sal, marinero a la mar. Muy bien. I will see you next time with another interesting dicho. Adios. Many cultures have used the signs in the sky, like the moon and the clouds, to predict the weather conditions to go sailing. When you get up in the morning, you put on your clothes and get ready for your day. Did you ever think about how your clothing is made? The ancient Mayans would weave cloth for their own clothing and use many beautiful patterns and designs. Let's learn a little more. For over 2,000 years, Maya cloth and clothing have served as artistic expressions communicating layers of meaning both to the Maya themselves and to informed outsiders. In Maya myth, the goddess of the moon taught women to weave sacred designs. Mayan women today wear a multicolored upper garment called a huipil. The huipil is a traditional garment consisting of a rectangular piece of cloth that is folded and stitched at the sides. It is hand-woven or embroidered in a rainbow of colors with geometric, floral, animal, or human designs, and the design of the wepeel identifies the community to which the wearer belongs. Hundreds of symbols have been identified in Mayan textiles. The weaver selects a combination of symbols to portray a mythological drama. Diamonds represent the universe and the path of the sun in its daily movement. The large diamond in the center represents the sun at noon resting in the center of its daily journey. Of the three million Maya of Central America, the indigenous people of Chiapas, Mexico are among the most traditional. The women still weave and embroider clothing for themselves and their families today. ¿Dónde está María? Ella está en el observatorio. ¿Qué ve ella? Ella ve el planeta Venus. It's a clear night to look at Venus. Jaguar del tiempo. Pasó el jaguar por nuestra tierra. Las montañas le saludaron y los pantanos le dieron agua. Llegamos los humanos a verle caminar por la selva maya. Le ofrecimos maíz y chile pero solo quiso comer carne. Le tuvimos miedo y el jaguar se echó a correr con el sonido de los truenos. Ahora vemos sus huellas en la constelación y nos guía con las estrellas. En las cuatro esquinas del mundo, norte, sur, Este y oeste alumbra la luna llena cuando en ella se acurruca el jaguar. Did our poem seem long to you? I know you recognize some of the words. Did you recognize la tierra and el jaguar? Very good! Now, let's learn the new vocabulary in the poem together. The word for mountain in Spanish is montaña. La montaña. 
Repitan conmigo. La montaña. The word for swamp in Spanish is pantano. El pantano. Repeat it after me. El pantano. Muy bien. The jungle in Spanish is selva. La selva. Say it with me. La selva. Excelente. Did you catch the words that talk about two kinds of food in the poem? You did? Yes, chili pepper and corn. I'm so proud of you. Chili pepper in Spanish is chile. El chile. Una vez más. El chile. And last, we have corn. Maíz. El maíz. Say it with me. El maíz. This poem is about the extinction of the jaguar. The animal is on the list of endangered species in the United States, Mexico, and Central America. In this poem, the jaguar was first welcomed to the earth by the mountains and the swamps. Then, as humans start to populate the earth, the jaguar began to disappear. Now, we can feel the jaguar's presence in the light of the stars and the moon. The ancient Mayans had a diverse diet that many of us would find very tasty today. Their diet had many dishes made with corn, maize, squash, sweet potatoes, and beans. Since corn was a major part of the Mayan diet, it was served at almost every meal. From breakfast to dinner, corn was on the menu, including tortillas and tamales. Corn was served with beans for protein, so the Mayans had a very nutritious meal. Beans were mashed up and wrapped inside tortillas to make something like the first burrito. Squash came in many different varieties, and the Maya used all of the squash. They ate the raw flesh as it was, and also dried and roasted the seeds as a snack. Chiles were also used to spice up beans and the other dishes. They also enjoyed tropical fruits like guava, banana, avocado, papaya, and bread nut, which they gathered in the wild or grew themselves. The kinds of meat they would eat included turkey, fish, and deer. Sometimes even an iguana or an armadillo would land in the cooking pot. Turkey was also a major ingredient in a soup used in many Mayan ceremonies. One of our favorite sweets today was enjoyed by the Mayans long ago as a special drink, chocolate, chocolate, made from the beans of the cacao tree. Only the noble and elite people of Mayan society could drink this special frothy beverage made of cocoa mixed with other spices. Many anthropologists, the people who study societies, consider the ancient Mayans to be the first people to have made chocolate. Isn't that amazing? If you've ever eaten a tamal, then you've eaten food prepared in a style that is over 1,000 years old. It was fun to learn that many of the foods we eat today were discovered so long ago and were enjoyed by the Mayans. ¡Qué increíble! Ahora es tiempo para la composición estudiantil. It's time for your composition. Imagine that you are cooking a meal for a Mayan king. Write a short paragraph describing the foods you would include. Use as much Spanish as you can. Would you serve him chocolate? Maybe he would like squash and tamales, or perhaps a fruit salad. You're the cook, so you decide. It's time for our review. Let's go over the new things we've learned today, nuevos amigos. The verb of the day was ver. And in our first dialogue, our students used the sentences ¿Qué ves? And ahora yo veo La Constelación de Orión. Our new vocabulary included the terms La Astronomía, 
Astronomy. El Observatorio. Observatory. El Sistema Solar. The Solar System. La Constelación. Constellation. El Planeta. Planet. El Eclipse. Eclipse. La Estrella. Star. La Luna. Moon. Venus. Venus. We also learn the words for mountain. La montaña. Swamp. El pantano. Jungle. La selva. Chili pepper. El chile. And corn. El maíz. In our second dialogue, the students used the following sentences and conjugated the verb ver, to see. Ella está en el observatorio. ¿Qué ve ella? Ella ve el planeta Venus. Our wise man brought us the dicho. Si ves las estrellas brillar, sal marinero a la mar. So keep in mind the meaning of our dicho and look at the night sky to see if there might be good sailing ahead. Be sure to write today's vocabulary words and your composition about what kind of meal you would serve a Mayan king in your Diarios de Español. You've worked very hard today, Nuevos Amigos. I am so proud of you. You've done an excellent job. Han hecho un trabajo excelente. If you have any interesting information or fun ideas about Latin American culture and history, then I'd like to hear from you. Write me a message and have your teacher email it to me. Mándame un correo electrónico. The email address is nuevosamigos at dallasisd.org. Remember, when you learn to speak another language, you also make new friends. Acuérdense, cuando aprendemos más de un idioma, podemos hacer nuevos amigos. ¡Adiós! Buenas tardes, nuevos amigos. ¿Cómo están hoy? Bien, me alegro. In our last lesson, we discovered the ancient Mayan civilization and how they were leaders in creating a calendar by using astronomy, the scientific study of the planets, stars, and the universe. In today's lesson, we'll learn about the Incan culture and how they were leaders in creating roads and highways with a swift messaging system using personal runners. We'll discover how they kept governmental records without writing anything down. We'll also learn how the Inca were skilled in using precious metals to make jewelry for the noble classes and objects for religious rituals. The Incan culture was ruled by an emperor whose power stretched over thousands of miles and many different tribes of people. Over 20 languages were spoken in the Incan lands. 
Let's learn some new words as we begin our look into the ancient Incan culture. Saquen sus diarios de español y prepárense para escribir. Emperor in Spanish is emperador. El emperador. Repitan conmigo. El emperador. ¡Qué bien! Tribe in Spanish is tribu. La tribu. Say it with me. La tribu. The word for road in Spanish is carretera. La carretera. Una vez más. La carretera. Another word that's spelled the same way in English and Spanish is metal. In Spanish, it is pronounced metal. El metal. Let's say it together one more time. El metal. Perfecto. Let's find out the verb of the day. El verbo del día es correr. To run. Correr. Let's conjugate the verb correr. To run. Yo corro. I run. Tú corres. You run. Él, ella corre. He, she runs. Usted corre. You run formal. Nosotros corremos. We run. Ustedes corren. You all run. Here are more words you will need to know as we learn about the Incan civilization. El ejército. Army. El ejército. El imperio. Empire. El imperio. La plata. Silver. La plata. El cobre. Copper. El cobre. El bronce. Bronze. El bronce. Now, nuevos amigos, I want you to pay close attention to our first dialogue. Listen for the verb of the day, correr, to run, and its conjugated form, yo corro. I run. I want you to also listen for the word Puente. El puente. Bridge. Let's say it together. El puente. Good. Here's our first dialogue. ¿A dónde corres? Yo corro al puente. ¿Por qué? Porque necesito que entregar un mensaje. Did you understand the dialogue? Let's go over it. Student number one said, ¿A dónde corres? Which translates to, where are you running to? Let's say it together. ¿A dónde corres? Student number two responded, Yo corro a el puente. Which means, I run to the bridge. Let's repeat it. Yo corro a el puente. Muy bien. Student number one said, ¿Por qué? Why? Student number two replied, Porque necesito que entregar un mensaje. Translated, this sentence means, Because I need to deliver a message. Repeat after me. Porque necesito que entregar un mensaje. Very good. I believe this dialogue will help you later when it's time to write your composition. So keep it in mind. Now, let's learn more about the amazing empire of the Incas.
The Inca believed that they were the greatest of all civilizations. At the time of their greatest power, they controlled an empire that stretched over 2,500 miles along the western coast of South America. We spoke with Dr. David Wilson, an archaeologist and associate professor at Southern Methodist University, about the Inca civilization. The Inca were a great civilization, one of the greatest in the Americas. Um, they stretched all the way, their empire stretched all the way from the southern border of Colombia clear down to Chile, uh, south of Santiago, the modern capital of Chile, uh, for a total of about 4,000 kilometers. And it was very narrow all the way down. It stayed in the Andes and on the coast. And they conquered people speaking a variety of different languages, and that's why the Inca state is called an imperio. In other words, an empire composed of people who speak a variety of different languages. But once they conquered them, uh, they imposed the Quechua language on everybody. And so Quechua is now spoken pretty much throughout that area of the Andes from what is now the southern border of modern Colombia all the way down to central Chile. The Inca used uh, strings called quipu, Q-U-I-P-U, which were strings of different colors uh, with knots on them. And with these knotted strings, which were sort of like uh, what one might call a memory jogger. In other words, uh, you're looking at this string and these knots and uh, you sort of remember what that string's color uh, indicates. It might be a certain color like red to count yamas, or blue to count corn, or some other color to count people. In this way, uh, in a very complex empire, or imperio, they were able to keep pretty good records of exactly where all the people lived, how many yamas they had, how much corn they were producing on their land, uh, those sorts of things. The most important animals to the ancient Inca, and even to people of the modern Andes, are the yama and the alpaca. The yama is used as a beast of burden its wool is sometimes used to make bags and rope, uh, but it's a very coarse wool, and if someone wore a sweater made out of yama wool, it would be very scratchy, so it wouldn't be very pleasant to do that. Uh, instead, people make uh, sweaters out of the wool of alpacas, but alpacas are used to carry loads great distances throughout the Andes, or at least were in the time of the Inca. There are several ways we know about the Inca. One of them is that at the time of the conquest in 1532, Spanish priests who were there during the conquest and then came to what is now Peru a little after the conquest, uh, learned Quechua, taught Spanish to the people who had been conquered, and then from that took down uh, uh, very detailed histories of everything the people who were still living, but who had lived there during the time of the Imperio, or the Inca Empire, uh, knew about. And one of those was um, uh, Waman Poma de Ayala, who traveled all around the Andes, uh, got to see all the ancient archaeological sites, uh, or many of them, and drew pictures uh, depicting what different people looked like as they carried out activities uh, for the state, for the Inca Empire including the keepers of the quipu strings, the quipu kamayok, uh, people who built bridges, uh, women who worked for the state uh, weaving and producing the sacred maize beer called chicha, uh, all the administrators, what each citizen had to do for the state. Um, all these things were depicted in a beautiful series of over a hundred drawings uh, that Waman Poma published in 1615. Amigos, aquí estamos una vez más. Así es time for our dicho once again. Pay close attention because this dicho will help keep you out of trouble. No todo que brilla es oro. Now say it with me. No todo que brilla es oro. This dicho translated to English means all that glitters is not gold. It tells you not to be fooled by appearances. Say it again with me. No todo que brilla es oro. Excelente. 
Stop and think about this dicho this week as you go about your daily task. And I will see you next time. Hasta la próxima. It's good to take time and think about whether something is really what it seems to be. For instance, a new pet could be a lot of fun, but it's also a responsibility that takes a lot of work. The ancient Incans had a unique attitude to something we hold very valuable. They used it to decorate themselves and their surroundings. To them, it was like the sun. What do you think it was? Let's find out. Two precious metals that we value today for their beauty are gold and silver. The Inca also valued gold and silver because it symbolized to them the light of the sun and the tears of the moon. Gold and silver were believed to have a divine power, and that is why the Inca never made coins out of these metals. The Inca certainly had plata or silver and oro or gold. Uh, they did not make money. The idea seems never to have occurred to anybody in the Americas, including the Incas, um, but they certainly used those metals to make objects that were uh, for jewelry, uh, other kinds of things that people wore who were elite or important people in the state. Akori Kamayo was a person in charge of making things like jewelry or little household deities in the form of a human out of gold. And the Inca probably mined that gold in a variety of places in the Andes, also got it in placer form out of streams by panning for it, but nobody knows for certain. But the Andes are rich in gold and they're rich in silver, so the Incas worked both those metals. Once they worked the gold, they were able to heat it to high temperatures and create uh, solid ingots of gold and then sort of hammer those down. And some of these very thick sections of gold were used to decorate uh, some of the Inca structures, like the circular structure in the center of Cusco called the Cori Cancha. Cori means gold and Cancha means enclosure. And inside that enclosure, they had life-size golden representations of llamas, alpacas, maize plants, and other things that were important to them. And they decorated often, they decorated their clothing with uh, metal objects. The Inca themselves tended to wear gold and some silver, uh, and they put those kinds of objects all over their, their clothing as well. Though most of the Inca gold and silver was destroyed, today there still exists some examples that give us an idea of the splendor and beauty of the work the artisans crafted. ¿Qué haces? Yo hago una pulsera. ¿De qué hacen la pulsera? Hago la pulsera de plata. Let's go over our second dialogue. Student number one said, ¿Qué haces? This translates to, what are you making? Let's say it together. ¿Qué haces? Student number two responded, Yo hago una pulsera. This means, I'm making a bracelet. Let's repeat it. Yo hago una pulsera. Muy bien. Student number one said, ¿De qué haces la pulsera? What are you making the bracelet out of? Todos juntos. ¿De qué haces la pulsera? Student number two replied, Hago la pulsera de plata. Translated, this sentence means, I'm making a bracelet out of silver. Repeat after me in Spanish. Hago la pulsera de plata. Great job, nuevos amigos. Adivinanza. Oro no es, plata no es. Mira lo que tienes y adivina lo que es. The answer to this riddle is a little tricky. Did you recognize the words for silver, 
plata and gold, oro. I thought you would. Did the sound of saying plata no es sound like another vocabulary word from last year? Listen, plata no es. You are so smart. Yes, in the second line, plata no es sounds like platano. Platano is Spanish for banana. The answer to the riddle is platano, banana. You will remember from our previous lesson about the Mayan civilization that the word for mountain in Spanish is montaña. The Incan people lived in cities located in the mountains of present-day Peru, Chile, and Ecuador. They constructed their cities at high altitudes with great skill using stone to build temples, palaces, and homes. Stairs, bridges, and roads linked the inhabitants of the cities, and highways connected every major district in the Incan Empire. Now, let's learn some new vocabulary that will keep you moving. The word in Spanish for altitude is altitud. La altitud. Say it with me. La altitud. Then we have alta. Alta means high or tall. Repeat after me. Alta. Muy bien. Now we have escaleras. Las escaleras, meaning stairs or steps. Repeat after me. Las escaleras. Excelente. Now, let's see how the Incans use their roads and special messengers to communicate along their own information superhighway. The Inca were excellent architects. They built stone cities with giant platforms and statues. They also developed a road system along their empire. This system was so long that the Inca people could travel across the land of what we now know to be Peru, Ecuador, Bolivia, Northwest Argentina, and Chile. The Inca did not have wheels, so they traveled by foot. Within the Inca population, there were messengers called the Chasqui Runners. Chasqui Runners were people who carried the string messages, the Kipu string messages, around the state so that the emperor could get information passed from one place in the empire to another. Very important in the Andes especially because they're so difficult even to walk through. Uh, but these Chosky runners ran everywhere. They carried the messages as fast as they could run down the road. But obviously, even though they were barrel-chested and well adapted to the Andes, they would get tired after a half hour or an hour of running. So they had to stop at one of the way stations or tombos. Then somebody else, another Chosky runner, would carry the verbal message or the string message or whatever they were carrying, like fish for the Incas table, they would carry it on the next distance. And when they got tired, another Chosky runner would carry the information on through to wherever uh, for hundreds and hundreds of miles, taking sometimes days or weeks to get from one place to another. It's very, very impressive. So the Inca were not only good architects and civil engineers, but also good travelers and farmers. They kept great communication in between kingdoms, and that allowed them to grow as a civilization. How many times did you hear the verb of the day to run, correr, or other conjugated forms of the verb correr? I'm glad to hear you've been listening. Ahora es tiempo para la composición estudiantil. It's time for your composition. Imagine that you are a chasqui runner taking an important message to the king. Write a brief description of the road you traveled on. Use as much Spanish as you can. It's time
time for our review. Let's go over the new things we've learned today, Nuevos Amigos. The verb of the day was correr, to run. And in our first dialogue, our students used the following sentences. ¿A dónde corres? Where are you running to? And yo corro a el puente. I am running to the bridge. Our new vocabulary included the terms el emperador, emperor, la tribu, tribe, la carretera, highway, el metal, metal, el ejército, army, el imperio, empire, la plata, silver, el cobre, copper, el bronce, bronze. We also learned the words for la altitud, altitude, alta, high or tall, el puente, bridge, las escaleras, stairs or steps. In our second dialogue, the students used the following sentences and conjugated the verb hacer, to make. ¿Qué haces? What are you making? Yo hago una pulsera. I'm making a bracelet. Our wise man brought us the dicho. No todo que brilla es oro. Meaning, all that glitters is not gold. Be sure to write down today's vocabulary words and your composition about what it would be like to be a Chosky runner as you deliver a message to a king in your Diarios de Español. You've worked very hard today, Nuevos Amigos. I'm so proud of you. You've done an excellent job. Han hecho un trabajo excelente. If you have any interesting information or fun ideas about Latin American culture and history, then I'd like to hear from you. Write me a message and have your teacher email it to me. Mándame un correo electrónico. The email address is nuevosamigos at dallasisd.org. Remember, when you learn to speak another language, you also make new friends. Acuérdense, cuando aprendemos más de un idioma, podemos hacer nuevos amigos. Adiós.